Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a chat about copy-paste vehicles, and the reason why I've been thinking about it the last little bit is because I've been spading the German Leopard 2A4. Now, the Leopard 2A4 in the German tech tree is not the only Leopard 2A4 that's in the game. There's actually quite a few of them, but uh, there are two in the Swedish tree, the SDRV121 and also the Finnish Leopard 2A4 that I've already played and already spaded. So this is either my second or third spading of a standard Leopard 2A4. The only difference between them is the 121, at least when I played it, got stock APFSDS, which was quite nice and made it a little bit easier, whereas with the 2A4 nowadays, you have to research the DM13 at rank 1. And it gets to a point where if you spade the same vehicles over and over and over again, it kind of gets a bit monotonous. It was one of the problems with the Israeli tech tree, where every time you unlocked a new Magak, it basically felt like the same experience over and over again, with slightly different late-tier modifications. I even made the point where, back in the day, if you had a look at an 8 Magak and you compared it to a 9 Magak, in a stock configuration, the 8 Magak is actually better than the 9 one because of the fact that it is more mobile because it's not as heavy. Obviously, the upgrades are what make the difference, but then once again, if I'm using a vehicle at 9.0, which is the same as an 801, until I get rank 4 modifications, it's not exactly a great experience, is it? And this led to a lot of feelings where I didn't really want to continue playing the Magax. You know, ended up finishing stuff like the Garbatash, and then they added a bunch of other ones, and I was like, you know what? I'm okay. I don't really feel like them. And then that feeling came back in the last update, where they added the Hungarian subtree for aviation. Once again, a really nice subtree. It also fills a bunch of holes for the Italians. It um, actually fixes uh, some of their cast issues, but mainly some of their jet issues, where there are a lot of jets which are in very awkward places at the moment. So now, with the Hungarians there, it actually makes a lot more sense to play through that part of the tech tree. But all of the vehicles are pretty much just copy-paste from other nations with slight tweaks here and there, whether it's in their camouflage or whether it's in other areas, to try and make them a little bit more interesting. So the appeal this time for me of that tech tree is pretty much zero unless they add something on top of it, such as a page of history or such as maybe a unique vehicle in the middle of it to actually get me interested. And I've been trying to work out in my brain how to kind of fix this, how to make it so, you know, people actually want to play multiples of the same vehicle, whether it's something like the T-72M1 or the T-55s or any of the kind of Soviet export vehicles or American export vehicles that we see in the game. Stuff like the M47 for Japan or the M24 for Japan or even other nations uh, such as, you know, the Italian Sherman or the Italian, you know, uh, well, the Panzer IV is premium, but you get the idea, right? Maybe uh, there are ways of fixing this. They have talked about uh, in the past, if you research key vehicles from specific tech trees, then you will kind of get a bonus from researching other tech trees. So giving you a little bit of a platform to be able to finish one tech tree and then move on to another instead of you just playing that one tech tree over and over again. Now, they haven't added that yet. They have added in the skill bonuses uh, for RP, which is really cool. And also a lot of the other economic changes that they said they would last year, which is fantastic. But they still haven't added that part where they 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 obviously didn't, you know, fully flesh out the idea or at least have been over the time. But the idea of it was if you uh, researched key vehicles in specific tech trees, then that would give you a percentage bonus RP amount um, in other, other nations when you played them. Now, that is a really cool idea. But what instead of doing it uh, per tech tree, what if you did it not just that, but also per vehicle? So, for example, if you have played the Leopard 2A4, in the German tech tree. If you have spaded it out and you have fully modified it, you know, maybe not ace the crew or maybe you've experted it or whatever it is, if you are able to do that and get it to 100% modification, when you come along to play either other Leopard 2A4 derivatives, such as the SDRV121 or the Leopard 2A4 for Finland, 
what if you set up in a scenario where the actual total research cost of that vehicle is 10 or 20 percent lower and not just the total rp needed to research the vehicle what about each modification so now there is an actual incentive for you to play pretty much the same vehicle again itself. Because even though there is quite a lot of copy and paste stuff in the game right now, one of the cool things about it is actually putting stuff together. So for example, if you look at the Leopard 2A4 in the German tech tree, you have a really interesting set of vehicles alongside of it. You know, you got the Florak Panzer, which is in a really bad state right now, but at least it's there. Then you have the Tam 2C, which is a very underrated light tank, the Puma, the Event Leopards, like the PT-14, which is an insanely powerful Leopard, by the way, the Leopard 2AV, which is there too, and then also a bunch of other vehicles like the Premium Leopard 2. But in the Swedish tech tree, you have all of these interesting light tanks, the STRF 9040s and the CV 9030s, and also some interesting AAs, plus some other MBTs that you can bring along with. And that, to me, is really interesting, and that is where the kind of uniqueness comes in. But if you could give somebody an incentive to actually uh, play that area and have fun in that area, I think that would be really positive. And this, since we are getting more and more copy-paste across the board, will benefit a ton of different people. I think the strength of War Thunder is the fact that it has so many vehicles in it, and I would want people to experience all of these different things so much uh, because I've had so much fun myself playing them over, you know, the the uh, various, well, basically decade <laughs> of, uh, you know, the last 10 years, which is crazy. And if you give them an incentive to do it, not just in ground, by the way, this could easily be done in aviation, this could easily be done in naval, it could even be done in helicopters, where, you know, you have stuff like the AH-1s and even the MH-60s and stuff like that, where you could just give a little discount to the secondary vehicle if you've already finished modifying the first. This would be fantastic. And I really, really hope they have a system like this uh, in the works. And uh, the fact that SL, at least for me, is not a huge issue anymore, and the fact that I've never really seen too many people worry about it, I feel like the, the main focus now of these things should be on research and should be on trying to uh, make it easier for people to be able to get as many vehicles as possible. Hopefully this year we're already in for a research reduction. We're probably going to be in for a bunch of BR changes soon as well, which will be really nice. But the main thing is trying to get people access to as many vehicles as possible so they can have as many fun times as possible. I don't want people just to be stuck in one tech tree forever. I want them to be able to want to explore different things. And since right now, there isn't really a ton of incentives to do it. Even the pages of history, the vast majority of the pages of history, uh, you can do with US, Germany, or USSR. Even stuff like, you know, dailies or specials or any of these things. If you play pretty much any of those tech trees, you're going to be able to do all of them. Where are the tech trees? It's not so much. So there are some other things I would like to do to make tech trees a little bit more interesting, uh, such as adding at least one type of vehicle to each of the tech trees. So for example, for Israel, adding a heavy tank to it, uh, also stuff uh, like that. So if you want to do dailies, if you want to do specials, you can do it. And not a premium one, by the way, uh, just a standard tech tree one. Same with Sweden. Since Sweden does not have, I don't think, a standard tech tree heavy tank, it means that you just can't do those dailies. Same with stuff like strike aircraft or light tanks at certain BRs. There needs to be a bit of variety uh, to judge it up. But the main thing is the discounts. The discounts is something you don't see too much in the game, but it's something that is really required to just give people just a little incentive. And it, once again, it doesn't need to be a lot. You know, and you can adjust it as it goes along. Maybe you start off a 5% discount. Maybe instead of, you know, having to grind out 400,000 RP for something, what if it was just 390 or 380? It doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to be that little bit which separates it from its previous vehicle. And then if you feel like it's not giving enough incentive or it's not pushing people to do it, 
you can always increase it a little bit and just try different things. Or maybe give people coupons where if they spade a specific vehicle, they can go, oh, so there is a similar vehicle in another tech tree. You can pick one uh, which you want at a discount, maybe a 30% discount in RP to actually, you know, totally research the vehicle. And then that gives you an incentive to do it. For me, this would be fantastic and would be really good and also help people move between the tech trees, which means they have a better time and don't just get stuck playing the same monotony over and over again. One of the things that I've seen that really makes puts people in a negative headspace is when they get stuck in one tech tree with this belief that they have to get to top tier and if they don't get to top tier, you know, they're going to, I don't know, end up being a failure to something. Whereas the people who generally will have a better time are ones which just vary and move around the place and then eventually get to top tier. You don't have to get to the bangers straight away. So with this method, it would mean that people would have a bit more choice and also it would be a great incentive for people to try different things. And after playing the Leopard 2A4, I'm not really interested in spending another one for a bit. And that, if I had that incentive, may actually change. Especially since I have a bunch of things I want to research, especially in the Italian tech tree. As always though, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.